roughly five yards away. We're just gonna do some headshots. It's funny because the dot on auto adjust is too bright in the sun. But if I remember right, it wasn't quite as bright as I would want it indoors. So the auto adjustment, mm, not my favorite, but it does work. It is visible all the time. It's just, I wish you could adjust it uh, manually to where it could be higher or lower than it thinks it needs to be, if that makes sense. All right, welcome back guys. Today we are going to be talking about this site right here. So in case you can't read, um, it says Olight on the side. So I was surprised whenever um, I was contacted by Olight and they said that they were developing a red dot site and asked if I'd be interested in reviewing it because as you know, I'm not the biggest fan of a lot of Olight products, but I do think they are capable of making good products. Um, as evident by this flashlight right here. If you haven't seen my review on this flashlight, um, go ahead and watch it. Long story short, I think it's a great value for under $100, and it's probably the best light under $100 on the market, and it gives even more expensive lights you know, a run for its money, um, specifically the Surefire X300 Turbo. Now, again, if you want my full review of that, you know, go back and watch my review. But that I paid for myself. This was sent to me by Olight for free. So full disclosure, I didn't pay anything for it. And obviously, you know, them sending this doesn't influence me. At least I try not to let it influence me. I give my opinion and I'm unapologetic uh, in my views. So with all that aside, um, I think this is a decent deal for what you're getting. Um, if you're familiar with all of my, you know, five optics that are back there. Those are all more, well, maybe not this one, um, but the rest of those back there are all budget friendly options that are you know under $200. Most of them are around 100 to $150 range. Um, but this is kind of another option in that price range, but this one comes with a lot more features and we'll kind of get into some of those being good, some of them being you know just kind of mediocre. Um, but it comes around, I think the MSRP is about $199, so about $200. Um, if you wait for, you know, they, they have sales every so often. Um, you can always wait for one of those if you want to get it a little bit cheaper. That's what I did for this light whenever I bought it. But, you know, MSRP is about $200, so you might see a little bit cheaper out there. Uh, you'll just have to kind of look around. But is that a good deal? Uh, it depends on what you're looking for. Um, honestly, uh, the build quality on this, which I'll kind of go into the specs here in a little bit, but... First, actually, let me talk about what's in the box and everything included, because some of y'all are going to be interested in that. Um, there are some neat things that are included with this, and I'll kind of go over that now. Um, it comes with a user manual, and I'm not going to read all the specs, because you can read. So I'm going to let you see this here. You can pause it wherever you want, and then you can look. You know, pause it, then you can read whatever you want, because I'm not going to read all this stuff. I don't think there's anything down here. Yep, there is. <laughs> I can read, I promise. All right, there you go, there you go, there you go. There's all the information, and we got into different languages. All right, so there's everything on there. I'm not going to read the specs because I don't care about that. I care about the practical um, usage of this and my experience with it. Now, full disclosure, I only shot about 100 rounds through uh, this gun with this optic because I was testing for specific things and problems that I've had with pretty much all of these optics so again if you watch these optic reviews you'll see what i'm talking about here in a second now part of these issues are related to this style of cut um, this is a zev rmr cut which i'm not necessarily a big fan of and you'll see why in a minute because a lot of optics have the same problems uh, with this style of slide versus they don't have that problem with a actual rmr you know pattern so again most of the issues i ran into this are because of the slide and the tolerances and the specs when it comes to these holes right here. Um, but we'll get into that in a second. So I want to talk about the main positive things first. So the positive things first and the kind of the things that come in the box is obviously it comes well packaged. Olight's known for that. It comes with a charging cable and it comes with this nifty little battery pack. This is basically a battery bank designed for this optic. So, and I apologize. I took all this stuff apart because I kind of wanted to show you all the individual components and then I'll show you what it looks like on a gun here in a minute. But this little battery bank has a little port right there, and then you push this button on the side, and it tells you what the battery capacity is. I charged this optic, and it was, I think, about 50% battery life whenever I first started charging it, which means it drained about a quarter of here. This battery bank, when fully charged, will recharge that optic three times. 
So that's kind of cool. You don't have to worry about plugging a cable directly into the optic anywhere that would mess with, you know, its uh, ability to resist water, dirt, and gr crud, you know, pocket lint, belly button lint, whatever. So that's kind of a neat feature. Um, that's kind of thinking outside the box. And now it does retain Olight's kind of, oh, not proprietary, but unique way of charging their things, which is magnets. So if you put this on here, it notice it sucks in and that's because there's a magnet in there and it holds it in place. And if you look on here, it's saying it's fully charged. So if you push the button on the side, it'll tell you the charge of the optic, which is almost entirely charged. Well, it is fully charged. So if I get this out, sorry, that's a little bit of annoying. Then it'll just show you, if I push the button again, well, it'll turn off here in a second. But right now it's showing you the battery, uh, what's left in this battery bank. If I push the button again, it shows you what's left. So whenever you attach it to the optic, then it shows you the battery life of the optic. So that's cool. Um, I like that. I'm not a huge fan, as you know, of the, oh, what would you call it? Just the magnetic charging um, capabilities of the flashlights of Olight specifically. Again, that's why I really like that Olight, the turbo, because it takes two CR123 batteries. I like the ability to be able to take out stuff and charge them. Now this um, runs into that same problem as if you're using this for training or something else. Um, you're not gonna be able to change out the battery. If you notice it's dead, you're just gonna have to run iron sights for you know an hour or so, just enough time for that to charge it. Which, I mean, if you put that on there for 30 minutes, it'd give you enough time to you know finish charging uh, for your day's use or whatever. So that's not that big of a deal, um, but it is still something. So when it comes to internal batteries, this is probably the best system I've seen just because it gives you a way to charge it and check it every now and then. Also, whenever this is mounted on your gun and you put this on there, this will actually fit. You can see it's saying uh, it's fully charged right now. But uh, whenever you put it in a holster, it will actually fit in my Alien Gear Rapid Force holster. Now the hood won't close because it's a level 3 holster, so that won't close over it. But it will still lock in, so that's kind of cool. It probably won't fit in whatever your holster is just because that's, that's pretty chunky. But I thought that was, you know, an interesting feature. Now it does not come with a Picatinny rail adapter plate. I wish it would because... This wouldn't be a little a bad optic to put on something like say an MP5 or a PCC or you know something like that where you want just like a really small profile. Um, so I would like to see something included like this, especially since a lot of cheaper options do that. But that's not a deal breaker for me because usually these are pretty cheap uh, if you want to buy a good one. Um, you know they're not that expensive. Now it also comes with um, well just stuff that really doesn't matter, but it comes with a little tool right here for adjusting. And it's kind of interesting, it has like a little skull on there, but it's used for adjusting the windage and elevation. And it also comes with a little torque screw on the end right there, which I would not use because you should always be using a torque wrench whenever you're tightening down screws. But you know, it's there. It comes with a cleaning cloth, yep. And it comes with a little bag to, I guess, put that thing in, the charger. I won't ever use that, but you know, it's included. So it does come with multiple screws and it comes with this nifty little box, which is filled with foam and the screws are inside. Um, what I plan on doing is actually taking the foam and these screws out and using these to store all of my screws. Because again, I have like 15 different, you know, tiny red dots and a whole bunch of screws and then extra screws that I bought for off eBay for testing things. And so having these little boxes is actually kind of useful for me. And they slide off of each other like that and they reattach. So I thought that was kind of cool. But, get, you know, little doodads and knickknacks aside, it does come with screws for different pattern cuts. Um, one thing I will say, though, that I ran into a problem is I was unable to use these screws. And this will come to my main complaint. Now, I will say this is most likely just a problem with this batch of screws. As you can see on there, see how it's all shiny? The threads are completely gone. I don't know if you can see that or not, but the threads are gone. Only two threads um, actually were able to engage on my slide. And again, let me show this to you. So these Zev posts right here stick up a little bit, and then the optic obviously sits on top, and then it screws down in two. So with this optic, because the body um, sticks out so much, you know, it's however thick that is before you get from here to where the bottom of that little kind of funnel bevel is. Um, it's a certain height and the screws are obviously not long enough because when I tried to tighten these all the way down, it would only engage two of the, the uh, threads before it started having like a decent amount of resistance. And that's, that to me isn't adequate because that basically makes one revolution of this screw um, whenever you're tightening and that is not enough. One revolution of the screw is not enough. I, in my opinion, for a duty use optic um, require two. I've had some screws come loose whenever uh, you just have one full rotation. 
Um, I mean, and even whenever they're torqued down correctly, just because I don't think there's enough thread engagement to actually, you know, grip to hold things in place. Now for a range gun, I don't think that's a problem. One revolution is probably enough for a range toy, but for something for serious use, you know, um, that's not, that's not good. Now that said, these screws clearly failed. Uh, again, hopefully you can see, yeah, you can see that. So the screws on this one, the threading just completely stripped off and I only tighten these down to 10 inch pounds of torque. And again, I use a, it's a, oh, who makes this? I think it's a Wheeler. Yeah, I use a Wheeler fat wrench and it was set to 10 because I start low and then work my way up just to make sure you know stuff like this doesn't happen. And then so I tried another screw and I got the exact same thing. This one's stripped off as well. There's a third one included in there, but that doesn't do me any good because it's a third screw and I need two to work. So I don't know again if all of the ones that were sent out or all the current production ones are going to have faulty screws in there or if that was just my specific set, but that to me was not acceptable. Also, these screws are not long enough. So obviously, as I told, uh, they're the two threads, that's not enough engagement. They need to include a set that's longer than these when it comes to the 440. I don't know about these other sets of screws. They might be fine, but again, these need to be longer. The 440s need to be longer so they can fully engage in here because there's a lot of threading in there that they could have utilized and they just didn't. So. That was obnoxious. Now I do have these screws here. These are the exact same screws that came. Well, they, they're the exact same 440 screws that are in here, they're, uh, but these came with a different optic. These screws that I ended up using to test this were actually sent with this Gobutar optic. And luckily they ended up using the exact same length screws or having the exact same length screws. But these um, are, you know, hardened correctly or heat treated or whatever they do to screws to make them tougher. Um, the threads never stripped out on these and I was able to torque these down to I believe 14 inch pounds of torque which is what I do on all of my optics that use um, these 440 screws. I believe the torque range for most optics are 12 to 15 inch pounds for these specific screws. Could be wrong but that's generally what I'm seeing and they should be able to handle 15 tor uh, inch pounds just fine and obviously they did on this one. Now why all that matters and wh what my issue is with this optic specifically, I'm happy that they included screws um, when it comes to this style of cut because this is what I do a lot of testing on. But if you'll notice, whenever I put it on here, you can see that, hopefully you can see that. Let me hold it up to the camera. You can see that right there, how much wiggle there is. Now I don't know if that's necessarily just the cut on here um, and that's why it's wiggling because it does have a little bit of space to wiggle on there and you can see that right here there's a little bit of wiggle space so they maybe might be able to make this body just a little bit thicker or longer you know this way to fill in that gap and that would help a little bit but also the post obviously have some wiggle room because it's allowed to move so these are a little smaller than these holes are right here now you could argue that's not an issue because you know the screws should hold it down and yes the screws in theory should hold it down but you have something like this and this is not an issue just with the O light. So let me show you here. So here's a CV Life. This is a cheap Amazon one. Same issue. This one is actually the worst one I've ever used. So you can see how much wiggle that one is. And this is what it's supposed to be like. Sorry, I'm getting attacked by flying ants over here. This is what it should look like. So this one right here is a Nightwing. Once it's on there, you get very little wiggle. There's a little bit, but not nearly as much. Those fit a lot tighter. And I understand they have to make those holes slightly, um, I think they have to be slightly bigger to accommodate a set of screws, but these I believe are almost identical in size to this. And so I believe the screws would still fit. So something I would like to see Olight do is if they're going to include the screws that are designed for this style of slide, they need to make these holes a little bit smaller um, that way they're the same size as these RMR cut posts because they should still fit All right, on here. And why that matters is whenever I went to the range, and I zeroed it, it held zero, held a nice tight group. I was very excited. And I shot it for a little bit and then re-zeroed it. Well, not re-zeroed it, but reconfirmed uh, the zero and it hadn't moved whatsoever. So just under recoil, it was holding zero just fine. So I know that the turrets and the uh, little detents in those held it and just recoil wasn't gonna cause them to move. Cause sometimes on little cheaper optics that can happen. So then I went to do a durability test and I just started racking it against a wood bench about 15 times directly on the optic. 
just to see if I could break the optic itself or if the uh, it would lose zero, whether um, just from you know the blunt force or you know some sort of other issue. And after those 15 racks against there, I shot it again, and I'll insert footage here in a second, but it shifted about three inches to the left, which is not a huge issue, and that was at 15 yards, and I was benched, um, and I called out any, you know, any shots that were pulled by me, um, but it moved about three inches to the left, and then I shot it again, and two or three of those rounds, if I remember correctly, uh, impacted still there, um, like, but well, not three inches left, but about one and a half to two inches left. And then a couple went back to the original zero. And I thought that was weird. How is it shifting itself back to where it was? So I fired one more uh, group and sure enough, the zero basically returned back to where it was. So what I think had happened, what had happened was, I think the screws on here, which had not moved, I witness marked them. They're not torqued down right now. I just put it back on here so you can see it. Um, but I think what happened is since the screws hadn't loosened at all, I think there was not enough pressure on these screws being torqued down um, to keep it from moving side to side because I think there's just too much wiggle room and the screws can't just can't handle that because there's not enough thread engagement. So I think the entire optic just shifted ever so slightly. And again, it doesn't take much at 15 yards, you know, three inches at 15 yards would be barely imperceivable on here. All right, so just bench rested it. I have one, two, three, four. That was me. Sorry. Oops, jerked the trigger. So here's where it's zeroed at. So I'm not gonna actually zero zero because I'm about to beat it upside a piece of wood. All right, just so you can see, gun is empty, no mag. Got a racket against here. Right about there should be good. So fifteen should be good. Let's see if it held zero. And after racking it. Two there, I must have pulled those two, uh, but significantly to the left. I don't remember pulling, I remember pulling one. I don't know. Let me shoot that one more time, but that obviously did not hold zero, and I highly suspect it's due to the screws not being long enough in conjunction with the tolerance just being too loose on my slide. So let me try zeroing, or let me try grouping it one more time just to make sure it's not. Bad. All right, so it did jump over here initially. Then I fired a second group to see if maybe it was moving or something. Then I have one, two, three, four, five. That was me, but these were still left. And now I fired a third group and there were still one, two, three, I think four and five. So it returned back to zero. So I don't know if that just means that the uh, tolerances, you know, as it moves around the slide, it kind of shifted back into position. Or if maybe the uh, detents allowed it to move a little bit. Not quite sure, but it's weird that it came back to zero. So my guess is it's more of the tolerances things, not the actual turrets or detents themselves. But sorry, bumping the camera. But whenever I had it aimed, like right now, it's just ever so slightly to the left which I think is about where it ended. But right, again, it's not torqued down right now. I had to re-zero it. But whenever I first zeroed it, they were lined up with the sights. And then after I racked it a bunch off there, it actually looked very similar to this, where it was just ever so slightly to the left. Or actually, I take that back. It was, it was slightly to the right, which means I shot to the left because I was having to move the dot over. So is three inches a big deal no not really and again that's only an issue with this style of slide but again i think that's something they should remedy if they're going to include the screws with it now one thing i will say that this optic has going for it is if you look on here it's very low mounted so you can see on here these are standard glock sights except you see i turned them backwards because i hate the u i think that's stupid so i blacked out my rear sights by literally just flipping them around and then they work just fine but you can technically get a sight picture um, with just standard glock sights and these are the lowest sights i know of that exist so if you have metal sights of any kind, they're almost always taller than these Glock sights. So you're going to be able to cope in this um, just standard height sights pretty much across the board as long as you have it directly mounted onto an RMR cut slide. So I guess under recoil, it was able to shift the metal, you know, uh, hit vibrating enough times it was able to shift itself back to its original zero. So that might be an issue for you that is an issue for me when it comes to a duty gun. So... I would not feel comfortable mounting this on a Zev cut RMR slide with the included screws. Now, if they included longer screws, I don't have a longer set of screws that actually work with this optic, 
Um, I've bought screws in the past, you know, just specifically to work with optics because th this is not the only company that has this problem. Pretty much all the ones back there included too short of screws with their optics. So that kind of annoys me. I guess they use the industry standard screw length, whatever that is, but they need to test specifically with the screws with their optic on the slide it's designed for and take measurements because that's kind of annoying. To me, that's a QC issue that I think they should have resolved before releasing this, but you know, that's just my opinion. But it will not be an issue, at least I, I'm 99.999% sure it shouldn't be. Because whenever you mount this, again, on a standard RMR, which I did on here, um, and I'll show you here in a second, there is absolutely zero wiggle. And if anything, that's actually the tightest optic that I put on this plate. And let me just show you that real quick. All right, so I just removed it from the slide up there. And as you can tell, here is a standard RMR cut slide. And it won't just sit on there, you actually have to press it down. So that to me is a very snug, like there's there's absolutely zero wiggle. So as long as your RMR, see, I actually have to even pull up a little harder to get it off here because it's almost a suction fit. So if you have a standard RMR cut or you have an adapter plate for whatever your gun is and it has an RMR, as long as it's tight fitting like this, I don't think you're gonna have any issue whatsoever. I think again, the problem is just the combination of the screws with that slide and everything else. So if you're using traditional RMR cut slide, this thing should be solid. All right, so that out of the way, that was the biggest negative. My biggest gripe was the screws and then the fitment on there. But again, that's just, you know, it sucks to be me because I have a Brownells cut slide. That might be you. I doubt anyone else that's reviewing these will mention that. All right, so features on here. It does have a light sensor and correctly so, they put it on the front because I think Hollow Sun maybe um, actually mount theirs like on in here or something. So it's actually looking up which is entirely worthless to me because you know you might be aiming somewhere that's a different lighting condition than where you're currently standing. So they rightly so put it on the front and I like that they did that. Now I will say the light sensor on here is not as good as something like the CUDA, the C-U-D-A. I've done a review on theirs as well. Theirs is by far the best light sensor I've ever used because it was perfect in every lighting condition I could throw at it. Now this one on the other hand, I think needs a little bit of work. And again, other people are probably not gonna say this, but you get the truth here. So indoors it was not allowing it to get bright enough it was always too dim now there were some conditions indoors where it was usable but i would have preferred it to be a little bit brighter and then whenever you use something like this light right here which is very very bright you know it has the turbo has very high candela it just washed out this red dot completely eventually if you stared at it long enough you could kind of see a red dot but it was not great with um a high candela light with a normal light say like the tlr1 hl um, you could see it better, but it still wasn't good. Like it, the bread dot should have popped out and I had to hunt for it almost every single time. You can see how it's kind of dim right there. In my mind, it's actually too dim just in here. So indoors, it would not get bright enough. Outdoors, it was too bright. I don't, I don't know how you manage that, but whenever I went outside and started zeroing everything, I had to turn it down because it was just too bright. Now I would rather it be too bright than not bright enough. Um, so indoors was kind of a deal killer for me. I could deal with a too bright outdoors, but that was kind of annoying. But to say that, I'll go into the features. So that feature is only on setting three. It has three different settings. And if you push and hold the plus, it does, well, multiple things. One, it shows you the battery levels. It's got green, yellow, and red, depending on how dead the battery is. So you don't necessarily need that hood to see how you know your battery's doing. But mode three um, is the auto adjusting. So it auto adjusts and it does adjust pretty quickly, like to be fair. It adjusts probably within about half a second. I would say like you can see it adjust, but it's so quick that you're like, did I see it adjust? Oh yeah, I just barely did. So it's adequate in my mind. I would prefer it to be a little bit faster. Uh, the CUDA again blows this one out of the water, but that optic is twice the price. So I get it. Uh, the first mode is actually manual. So you can completely ignore um, this little sensor altogether and just set it to whatever you want, which is what I would recommend if you buy this optic. And then it also has a second mode, which again, if you hold down the plus for a couple seconds, it'll blink, you know, which mode it's in. Um, that's a lockout feature, which means you can set it on whatever optic or whatever uh, brightness setting you want and then turn it to the lockout mode and these buttons will do absolutely nothing. So if you're worried about accidentally hitting buttons, just, you know, set it to whatever setting you want and then turn it to lockout mode. So that's nice. Again, it has a battery feature, uh, the battery charger on the top. Um, it does have drainage ports on either side. So water, if it gets in here, will in theory drain out the side. Um, it does also have a lens right here protecting the emitter and keeping crud and water and stuff out of the inside, which I had problems with some of those optics over there. So you can see how tall this optic is. It has a larger window than most, but they smartly decided to make it taller instead of wider. 
I don't really like optics that just hang off the side. Like for instance, this, uh, I think this is CV Life. Yeah, so this CV Life, if you can see on here, it's wider, um, but it's not, let me see if I can put these side by side. Sorry, this is weird looking through a camera. And this optic is not actually mounted to there right now. Oh, let's just do this. All right, so side by side, you can see this one is substantially taller, but this one is wider. That wider view doesn't really give you a whole lot because your gun doesn't move from side to side, it moves up and down. So the reason they designed this one to go up and down is because under recoil, your gun is going to be flipping up and down and they made it taller so you can, in theory, you know, continue watching your dot and it doesn't disappear off the screen. So that said, that was a good design choice. Um, I prefer smaller windows in general, and I'm, I'm okay with this size because it actually does serve a purpose. But to me, smaller windows are easier to find the, the red dot in. So I, I actually like um, what they did with this because it's kind of the best of both worlds. And it doesn't hang off the side of your gun getting snagged on stuff. So kudos to them for that. So again, hopefully this gave you a pretty good review. I'm sure there's going to be a lot of other people out there. They're going to say nothing but positive glowing things. and. I mean, it is a, from what I can tell, solid optic. The body on it is pretty durable, pretty tough. Um, if you look on here, you can see just how much thicker it is metal-wise than something like this uh, Siley, and you can see why that broke, um, because the metal is so thin. This is a little bit chunkier, so it should be able to withstand, you know, blunt force a little bit better, being dropped a little bit better. Um, if you appreciate this content, uh, let me know. Again, hopefully I give you as unbiased of a video as I possibly can, because I'm not bought and paid for by anybody. Um, like I said before, I actually lose money on this channel. So if you have any questions about this optic specifically or just anything in general, just comment down below. I try to answer every question uh, and respond to every comment that I can. Like, subscribe to the channel. Um, it really helps with the YouTube algor algorithm because YouTube doesn't really like you know, gun content. So anyways, hopefully you appreciate this and I hope you all have a good one.